have fond memories of every classroom and every teacher at Oak Park Elementary School in Des Moines, Iowa. I was a midtermer. That means that the school system started kindergarten classes in September and then another one in January. And since my birthday was November 6th, I started in January. Didn't make much difference in our education except that our class always read the Christmas stories in the reader in May. I had a wonderful education and for the most part a very secure childhood during those years. Uh, we had all the basics and I particularly remember music class. We learned about composers and were making dioramas on operas when we were in fourth grade. We had a grade school chorus in which I sang and an orchestra and a band and since um, we didn't have any instruments at home, the teacher invited me to play bass drum in the orchestra. At home my mother bought us a piano and my sister was really very good, but I had just started taking lessons. Childhood was full of summer play, lots of friends, reading comics. I liked most of them, but I also remember reading the whole newspaper and I particularly liked the syndicated columnist Sidney Harris. It was a fun childhood and then the summer, right after I had finished half of my sixth grade, uh, it was August 19th, a day after my sister's 14th birthday. Everything would change. I was 11 years old. The evening is sketched into my mind. Our daddy had taken my sister and I over the summers to baseball games and he had taught us how to keep score. But that evening he went alone on a bus to a preseason football game. I remember sitting on the couch reading Little Women when the telephone call came. It was from the hospital. A neighbor took my mother and sister and I to the hospital because we had no car. We were sitting there in the waiting room for quite a while and finally my mother said to a doctor who was going by, can I see my husband? And the doctor said, don't you know he's deceased? I didn't know what the word meant. But as soon as my mother said, do you mean he's gone? I knew that he was dead. He had died of coronary thrombosis suddenly, alone in a crowd at the football game. That's all we would know. My Aunt Carolyn and Uncle Ott drove down 100 miles from Garner. And that's the place, actually, my father would be buried a few days later. Within two weeks, my mother had moved my sister and myself to Mason City, not too far from Garner. Everything had happened so quickly. I didn't even have a chance to say goodbye to my school friends. And my sister, who was then in junior high, lost her circle of friends as well. Mother wanted to keep my sister and myself together. So even though I hadn't finished sixth grade, um, I was tall and had good grades, so she convinced the school principal for me to enter junior high school, seventh grade. So here I was in junior high school and living in a two-room apartment downtown Mason City. I recall looking out the window at the lights of the drugstore across the street. What did I feel? Well, children didn't receive grief counseling in those days, and my mother really didn't either. I noticed in my childhood picture album that I just turned the page and have a picture saying, a different house. School had just started, and we were actually a few days late. I remember trying to find my room around Monroe, and it was a week later before I realized there was a staircase at both ends of the hallway. But I do remember Miss Stefan, our seventh grade social studies teacher. It was geography, and she gave me a manila envelope in which to keep my papers. But those three years at Monroe would turn out to be very good ones. Students were uh, grouped homogeneously, and they kind of put me in a middle class. But it was a few weeks later when they pulled me out of class and did some testing, and then I remember they put me in a different class. Um, and there I received uh, an education that fully used my gifts. Three years later, um, I remember Brian Brunsvold and I receiving uh, the awards for Outstanding Academic Achievement. 
And I remember Carol Ann Garland and I did radio programs in the local radio station on the news from junior high school. The junior high school guidance counselor met with each of us as we planned our schedule for 10th grade going into high school. And I remember her saying to me, with your abilities, it's your responsibility to go to college. Now, it had never in my wildest dreams occurred to me I might be able to go to college someday, but because she said, it's your responsibility, I somehow thought, well, I guess I should. As important as school was, equally if not more important, was the church, Bethlehem Lutheran Church. When we moved to Mason City, my mother needed a job. Years before, as a young woman in Mason City, she had attended Hamilton Business College. That was before women had the right to vote. And she went on beco to become deputy county recorder. So it was natural that she should try to get a job at the courthouse. And she did, and there she met Mrs. Tate. And Mrs. Tate told her pastor at Bethlehem Lutheran Church, Reverend Hintz, about this new widow with her two children who was in town. And Reverend Hintz made a pastoral call. He invited us to church and to Sunday school, and more than that, he asked people in the congregation to pick us up because we didn't have a car and take us, bring us with them to church. And more often than not, some of those people would invite us home for Sunday dinner. This hospitality and care uh, was so nurturing that I suppose it's not surprising that years later my theological discipline would be ecclesiology and that I would teach church and ministry. My sister and I also began attending confirmation instruction and there things came together for the first time. All the Sunday school stories I'd heard in my youth, but they hadn't really been all of one piece. And I think I knew that Jesus had died, but I never really heard that he rose from the dead and I didn't really know what that all meant. But in confirmation, it all came together and it really strengthened my faith. The care and um, education of the church was rich and it was secure for us. My mother and my sister and I moved to a three-room apartment on Ninth Street, but still mother struggled. Um, I remember a time at Thanksgiving when the church invited us to bring canned goods, uh, and my sister and I took canned goods to church, but then a couple of days later, we received a Thanksgiving basket from the church. And that may seem odd, but it really didn't seem odd to us. Somehow giving and receiving, being members of the body of Christ together just seemed very, very natural. But of course, it was still hard. I suppose today we would call it the feminization of poverty. My mother didn't stay long at the courthouse, but she did get a job at the handkerchief counter at Damon's department store. Um, still the next summer, it had been a difficult time for mother and we were being told we were gonna take a vacation and so the three of us went and stayed with relatives in Minnesota for a while. But when we came back, she got another job and the social security checks that uh, we received as minor children of a deceased parent really helped a lot. We had our Aunt Carolyn and Uncle Ott, and we had the church, and we had a community of friends. And once in a while, we'd receive a box of hand-me-down clothes, and it was kind of fun to see what was in there. And because my sister and my mother and I, by that time, were all the same size, we could share back and forth. My sister and I uh, grew, and school provided a sense of security and stability, as well as the church. My sister and I helped make the evening meal because mother was tired, and we helped with the laundry and with other chores. I think I was about 12 when I made a decision I needed to be responsible in this family. I would need to be a very good girl and try very hard and be responsible, otherwise, um, otherwise people might die. Years later, I discovered that uh, among those of us women first ordained and first seminary professors around the country, many of us uh, had fathers that died when we were children.